from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello everyone, I'm News Channel 5's political analyst Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues its spread across the country and around the globe, the U.S. is now first in the world in most confirmed cases. In addition to already killing thousands, tens of thousands worldwide, and over a thousand people here in the U.S., the disease also threatens to take down both the American and the world economies. Our guest on Inside Politics this week is Democratic, Nashville Democratic Congressman Jim Cooper. He is back on the front lines of the COVID-19 fight as the U.S. House goes into session to likely approve a $2 trillion virus relief bill for America, which the U.S. Senate passed late Wednesday. We appreciate him taking time to join us via Scoom. Congressman, thank you and welcome back to the program. Thank you, Pat. It's always great to be with you. Uh, is it fair to say that we are facing, in this country at least, the greatest public health and economic crisis at least since the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic and the 1930s Great Depression? I'm afraid you're right, Pat. These are serious times because this is a disease new to humanity and the economic consequences are terrible. Yeah, so not only are families afraid of losing a loved one, particularly somebody up in years, they're also afraid of losing their jobs and so many people have already lost their jobs. The, uh, the economic impact became painfully obvious this week. 3.2 million people have applied for unemployment last week alone. Is the economy in free fall? Well, the fundamentals are still strong. This is just a virus that one day we'll find a cure for or it'll go away. Uh, meantime, we're still the best nation on earth by far. And we have the resources to meet this challenge. It's just a question of marshalling those resources and taking the disease seriously enough. Right now, there's still too many people who are poo-pooing it. We don't want to wait till everybody's infected and our hospitals are overcrowded before we take this thing seriously. Are we gonna see unemployment numbers that look more like the Great Depression of the 1930s when we finally see those actual unemployment numbers for the entire month? Well, Pat, unquestionably, the unemployment number is gonna go up, but Congress is stepping in with a rescue package that is unprecedented. This is literally the largest bill in American history. It's not just two trillion, but it's $2.2 .2 trillion, and it will help with unemployment benefits. It will help repair the economy. Now, we can't solve it all overnight, but this is incredible. Who would have thought that a divided Congress would pass something almost unanimously? So this is a good moment for American history. We're moving forward with this, and together, if we're all cooperative, we'll get through this. Given how long it may take to recover from this, are we likely to see a fourth or even fifth relief bill that might be equally as large? The amount of money going to individuals and families probably won't tide them over much more than maybe a month or two. Well, you're right, the direct payments are only about $1,200 per person in April and in May, and we don't know how long the disease will last. But there are also incredible unemployment benefits. Literally, the federal government is almost doubling the unemployment benefits, and that's a remarkable situation. In I fact, many Republicans were, go ahead. I don't think Tennessee has great numbers for unemployment compensation. Is the state gonna do something to up their, lim their limits as well for how much money people can get when they're unemployed? Well, in a relatively poor state like Tennessee, the average benefit is $327, and the federal government's instantly adding $600 on top of that. So it's getting it much more in the sensible area. But still, we have to remember the devastation. Look at our tourist economy here in Nashville. Look at the musicians, the bartenders, the waiters and waitresses, already been thrown out of work. The hotels are empty. This is a sad situation, but we'll get through this. One day the virus will recede, and then we'll be strong as ever. And this bill is helpful for the gig economy, which is very important in Nashville. I understand there are reports as much as $3 billion coming to Tennessee. That sure sounds like an awful lot of money. It is about $3 billion just for Tennessee as a state. And local governments will get about half of that. But there are many other ways that Tennessee and Tennesseans can benefit, such right. as the unemployment insurance and the help for small businesses. Those packages will really multiply the aid that Tennessee and Tennesseans are getting. And you're known as a fiscal hawk, somebody who's always been concerned about budget deficits and the national debt. Uh, did you ever imagine you'd be in a situation like this to have to vote for the largest expenditure of money ever? Because all it's going to do is add to the national debt. Well, we should have reduced the debt when times were good. We didn't make hay while the sun was shining. And now that we face a real deluge, we've got to step up and solve the problem because what's most important is getting liquidity back in the economy so that the fundamental strength of the American economy can be revealed again. Right now, it's hidden behind this disease. We've got to get back on our feet. 
Uh, is it fair to say this virus caught Washington completely off guard, the nation unprepared? Uh, weren't we warned by national security officials that something like this possibly could happen? We have been warned, Pat. In 2015, DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, did an excellent study on this, predicting almost exactly what's happened. But in 2017, the president got rid of the Office of Pandemic Relief. He morphed it into another office, which really lost the focus. Um, and, you know, our hospitals were not prepared for something of this dimension. Because we thought there might be a hurricane, but we didn't realize the whole nation could be affected at one time. But, Congressman, doesn't it go deeper than that? The U.S. used to pride itself on having perhaps the best public health system in the world. But there have been budget cuts, not only on the federal level, but the state level, that have continued right through the Trump administration. This is something that, on all levels of government, the ball has been dropped. Well, we lost 12 to 13 hospitals here in Tennessee because we refused to expand Medicaid. But, you know, I think the analogy here is really World War II. We were caught flat-footed by Hitler, but pretty soon the American industrial machine kicked in, and pretty soon we're uh, building more fighter planes and jets and uh, aircraft carriers than any other nation could even imagine. So that's happening right now in America with ventilators, with masks, with PPE. So you'll see the uh, private sector kick in, but it's taken them a little bit longer than we wanted, and politicians haven't been buying them enough time. Congressman, the history tells us that coming out of the 1918 flu pandemic that we kind of forgot about that, we, like it never happened. Are you concerned we're not going to put the resources behind an ongoing public health system that we can make sure this is not going to happen again? Is Congress going to put the money up for that, not just for relief? Well, Pat, I've been sensitive to the needs of public health for a long time. My mother-in-law was a public health doctor in Mississippi for 40 years. And in general, public health has been shortchanged. We focused on the new and the glitzy and the highly reimbursed. Meanwhile, things like vaccinations are super important. Hygiene is super important. Uh, just having a sound infrastructure is super important. Think what would happen today if suddenly we lost the internet, or we lost water and sewer, or we lost electricity. So I was delighted to see, for example, TVA, making sure that no one's electricity is gonna be cut off during this crisis. We need the same with the water sewer system. We need to make sure that everybody can get the basic services because if you don't have water, how can you wash your hands? So this is something we can get through together. Our nation is fundamentally strong. Nobody wants to live in another country right now. In fact, one of my office's main concerns is returning all the Americans who happen to be caught overseas. And they've been caught in 20 or 30 different countries and they're all hoping and praying to get back to this great country. America is still the best and we're gonna show it again but let's rise to this challenge together. Nashville Congressman Jim Cooper is our guest on Inside Politics. About to continue our conversation with him after this break.